I had a sack. And sisters, I won't put this out there for the women too. If you're going to wear them ponytail, get the text in your hair, please. <laughs> I'm serious, because some of y'all want to get a silky black jack number nine hanging down your back, but you got an afro around the side. You know what I'm that don't blend. I'm supposed to believe you mix. You know, you African and Chinese. You know <laughs> my kids going to have half good hair, huh? You know, just get on my nine. And you brothers them bumps on the back of your neck. <laughs> Let your hair grow. I'm tired of it. You understand me? I was with a brother. He was standing by the stairwell. A blind man went and touched the back of his neck and thought it was an elevator. Damn it. Yo, 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 stop that. Yo, 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 son. And people with bad breath quit getting close. It's like the worst they breath smell. The closer they get, you be like, I know he smells his damn breath. You know? I'm talking about that breath that comes through the jaw. They ears, you can smell it coming out that way. You know? And everything be with an H. How you doing? Hey. Why don't you just call me an MF and let's leave it at that? You know what I'm saying? You can cuss me out three different lights with the breath. You know, and I was married one time. I, 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 I feel that. You know what I'm saying? I was married, and you don't know a person till you live with. Well, I, she was a good woman. You know what I'm saying? But it was things that she did. You know what I'm saying? That I couldn't really deal with. For instance, she woke up in the morning. She had that real, real bad breath. That tic tac tosis. You know, a halitosis, dog. Whatever it's called. You know what I'm saying? But it was bad. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, she's a kid, she would kiss them and go off to school. They get to the school bus, they crying and everything. Bus driver thought they were scared to ride the bus. No, their cheeks smelled like her breath. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, kids tease them in school, can on. So one morning I was running late for work. I had washed up, you know, Russ got to work, you know, and I'm walking past my guy gonna tell me, you know, be man, hey daddy. Man, you got a foul ass holder, partner. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got time for that. I'm almost late. You know I'm on probation. You know, I got one more time, I ain't gonna have this job, you know. So I'm walking in my white partner, you know, you kind of believe the white brothers more. They was like, excuse me, can I talk to you? I was like, yeah. He said, I don't know, something smelling on you. I'm like, yo, dude, you, I, I watched Luke's last night, you want to start something? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm walking and something, you know, I got the rub in my ass. I went to rub in the back of my head. She had drooled all in the back of my head. <laughs> I'm walking around here smelling like open ass. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> don't make no sense. You know what I'm saying? So we get ready to get a divorce. Just I'm on what grounds you getting a divorce? I said, baby, go up there and talk to him. You know what I'm <laughs> <laughs> she got through. He was like, she can have everything. Just get out of here. <laughs> out of here. Oh, I'm laughing. I'm gonna tell you something else get on my nerves when people want them big knots on their ears. I don't mind one, but when you got both of them, you know this one swole up and you're gonna try it on this side. You're gonna be both at first, at the right numbers have been straight. Now you're sitting around here and you got this one, you know what I'm saying? And then, ladies, the dirtiest though, because sisters don't, brothers, you can see it because they got the low haircut. But sister, y'all get the tab draped over it, you know? We up in your house, we're trying to mingle, watch TV, you know what I'm saying? I said, you don't get that, you don't get that. We call it, get that out, figure it, you get the skin in your mouth. Oh! You supposed to tell somebody about this. I'm walking around three days checking my tongue. I, like, I get a lot more fit, big, it's over with. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna get this show started. Hey, this brother I'm about to bring to the stage. I am so proud to have this brother here tonight. This is one of my partners. We have been blessed to go over to Europe and tour together. This brother here, he has an LB, he don't let that stop him. You see him on BET Comedy View. He toured with the Kings of Queens of Comedy. This is my man. Straight from Shy Town, on the low end, he's safe. But y'all give it up for my man. We call him Mr. Ill Will. Give some love. Come on, brother, yeah, baby. Yeah, what's up, y'all? What's up, man? Yeah. yeah. This portion of the show has been brought to you by Jerry Lewis, Michael Dance, Lou Brawl, Super <laughs> Brothers, Tom. Same motherfuckers y'all pay taxes for. I'm right here. So thank you for your taxes, because I won't get shit. But I'm a regular nigga. I'm a nigga owned by the government. It's me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. Five years ago, I got a little five years ago, I got diagnosed with what they call MS, multiple sclerosis. Same shit Montel Williams got. But every time you call this bitch nigga, he don't want to call you back. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm a regular nigga. You know what I'm saying? Niggas fuck with me because I walk slow and I walk with a limp. 
That's because I'm cool, bitch. I'm not <laughs> cool. <laughs> For a reason, you know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing wrong with me, though. Hey, I get tired of this shit. I'm just like everybody in this motherfucker, but every time I get on the CTA bus, it's in a special way. <laughs> they made me get on the bus with a costume hooked up to a bed pad. <laughs> like I'm a shit on the bus. Wake up and shit. <laughs> Nigga, I'm human, dog. Ain't shit wrong with me. <laughs> 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 Ain't nothing wrong with me, y'all. I'm just like everybody, man. I'm human, dog. I don't have my own car because the government won't give me no regular car. This lady offered me a 2005 Cadillac like Escalade. Handicap edition. <laughs> Front seat big in the motherfucker. <laughs> Gas that on the stairwell. <laughs> I'm human, dog. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with me. You know what I'm saying? I can't lie. I'm getting tired of the little punk ass celebrities I meet. They sure be special. I'm glad the kid was traded. Sammy Sosa put for that. Because I met him. Y'all know Sammy. <laughs> yeah, Sammy. I met him. But when I met him, he greeted me and treated me like I was kind of special. <laughs> he gave me a Chicago Cubs baseball cap. I was like, thanks, Sammy. <laughs> <laughs> but for some odd reason, my Chicago Cubs baseball cap, why well, didn't have a chest strap on that motherfucker? <laughs> 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 so my baseball cap was like a birthday hat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm human, man. <laughs> so that means don't bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Because out of all celebrities, y'all, I met Michael Jordan. Yeah, Michael motherfucking Jordan. You know what I'm saying? When I was coming up, everybody wanted to be like Mike. Hell, if I ate them nasty ass wheels. <laughs> <laughs> but when I met this bitch nigga, <laughs> he treated me and greeted me like I was a fucking retard. <laughs> you know, I'm like, yeah, what's up, Mike? How you doing? He's like, yeah. Michael gave me a basketball day. It was cool. I'm like, yeah, thanks, Mike. <laughs> but for some fucked up reason, tell me why did my jersey snap in between my motherfucking <laughs> Ain't shit wrong with me, so I got a baby jersey. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with me, y'all. I get tired of this, man. Chicago, I love my city because that's where I'm from. You know what I'm saying? And Chicago, they got little say so, and they call the niggas who sleep all of them, with all the women, call them bust downs, or the females that sleep with all the men, straight bust downs. You know? I'm going to bust down, too. <laughs> I'll, I'll be sleeping with all the women, but uh, every time I get on the bus, <laughs> for some odd reason, why the fuck the steps come down <laughs> and lift me up? Right? So I'm going to real bust down. Original. I get tired of this shit, y'all. Ladies, I love all. Love y'all, all you regular bitches. I love y'all. Y'all ain't even bitches, but y'all get on my nerves. Y'all only like me for one apparent reason. You all think you finna sit up and get some of my check. <laughs> it's my check, bitch. I'm sick by myself. You know I mean? <laughs> no, man, you regular one, man, because every time I deal with y'all, every time I have sex with a regular woman, why I can't tell them? <laughs> Why the fuck it gotta be kept a secret? <laughs> they tell me, look, don't you tell nobody. I'm like, what about folks now? You know what I mean? What about my boys? I'm like, nigga, don't say shit, nigga. That's how you get fucked up over here. <laughs> <laughs> but in the bedroom, I get down how I live. I can't do no regular man shit. I can't never smack on ass. 
or say no shit like say my name. <laughs> Who puts his dick? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she get mad, turn around like nigga, shut your retarded ass. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm still in that moment. <laughs> she turned back around, man. Nigga, put your helmet back on. <laughs> And quit all that motherfucking slobbing on my back. <laughs> <laughs> but it's totally different. I'm talking about when I hit him with the Wayne Dane doodle. I'm talking about I'm talking about this handicap assassin. It's totally different. <laughs> and I'll be on this. <sighs> you gonna give me that check, ain't you? <laughs> You're gonna break a bitch off face. <laughs> I'd be like, hell no, you get no check. <laughs> <laughs> you get free parking in this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Take that free parking. Take that free parking. <laughs> so I'm keeping it real, man. I'm human, y'all. Ain't nothing wrong with me. Please, women, you not gonna win. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, summertime is over for all you thick ass gold diggers. <laughs> wintertime is here. All gold diggers fall off in wintertime. Nigga. <laughs> yeah, you ever spend a night of a gold digger house in the wintertime? This brother got no hot water, no heat, no shit. <laughs> <laughs> this fucked up, our kids sleep in snowsuits with the moon boots on. <laughs> I'm tired of this, y'all. I'm human. I'm a regular nigga. It's bad, nigga. I just want me some cooch. <laughs> Cause this jagged off shit getting on my nerves. <laughs> now after a while it hurts, it burns. And wake up in the morning, dick like steak skin. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired. I'm tired, y'all. Jack, give me some. It's bad. I can't have sex with nobody. I can't even be in like. A thing from the hood, gang banging, all of them like in the orgy. In ghetto words, I can't never run a train on the chip. <laughs> For some odd reason, every time it's my turn, the train fucking stops. <laughs> <laughs> uh uh, fuck, uh uh, I don't do that. What kind of hoe you think I am? Uh uh, fuck that shit, uh uh. I'm like, bitch, you just freak. Eight niggas in front of me, what's up? I can't get no pussy. <laughs> I can't get no pussy. <laughs> Like, no, nah, nigga, uh, uh, you, uh, I don't do retarded niggas, no, I'm good. <laughs> Y'all do all that damn slobbing, uh, uh, I'm, I ain't on that. I'm like, eight niggas? She's like, uh, <laughs> she's like, nah, nigga, it's cool, eight's enough, I'm all right. <laughs> I'm a human being, y'all. Quit treating so special. I can't have sex with no damn body. I can't even have sex with the girl who burned their body on the hood. <laughs> I want to let you know tonight in this club, in this barber shop, whatever. If you burn it, so what? You nasty bitch. Call it at your boy. Because <laughs> I bang you. I'm just letting you know tonight you can't burn me. <laughs> My body's so full of medications like a repellent of it. <laughs> <laughs> so you fuck me, you'll be healed tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> this is sick cock, I'm telling you. It's the best, it's wintertime, have sex with your boy. It's like getting a flu shot. <laughs> Cause when I come, I just don't make babies and all that stuff. You know, when I come, it ain't nothing but rope and tuss and pillows up. You, <laughs> you all right. So I'm tired of this regular lady. Just give me some. <laughs> I am not retarded. <laughs> so quit trying to hook me up with all your little fucked up family members. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I'm like, oh, I hook you up, my little cousin, Shariri. She is the girl for you. <laughs> This really fucked up. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, this, this bitch chin is stuck to her shoulder. <laughs> I look like, what I'm doing with this chick? I ain't gonna do nothing but glass at this hoe and take that check on the person in the I'm talking about gorilla pepper. That's what I do. Oh my God. I'm a real nigga, y'all. I didn't want me a regular woman. 
I get tired of fucking all these little disabled chicks. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, y'all. I'm 25 years old. I stay in the old folks' home. You know what I'm saying? Don't nobody want to come in my house. It's a luxury. I stay on the second floor of my building, but you'll never have to walk up a step. And they ship the ramps all the way up. <laughs> I'm just letting you know. Man, cause I'm telling you, my last relationship is my boo. You know what I'm saying? I was 25. You know, she was 83, but this is my boo. <laughs> this is my girl. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about she had the original Dookie Boo. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about with the streak. I'm talking about she was <laughs> <laughs> this my food, you know what I'm saying? But this bra didn't tell me that she was hooked up to a colostomy bag, you know what I'm saying? They didn't tell me not. Yeah, doodle bag, she didn't tell me shit. <laughs> so I'm getting down with it, I'm talking about whooping it up. Bloop, <laughs> bloop, I was there biting. It was crazy. All of a sudden, bag busted. <laughs> Shit all over the place. <laughs> but it's cool. I ain't feel bad. Because I know deep down inside, as a real man, I fucked this shit out there. <laughs> Shit like radio. <laughs> you gonna get beat up. I'm just letting let you know that right now. <laughs> when I'm supposed to call you coach now, bitch. <laughs> get off that. I ain't known that. I'm a real nigga. Damn, man. I'm human. You know what I'm saying? I get tired going out of town doing all these shows for these people. I was in St. Louis, Missouri. I was doing comedy shows, and this group of white people came up to me. The white lady gave me five hundred dollars. Five. And a half of a large piece. Of, a, a large one, a big one. And I was like, no ma'am, no, I don't need this. I'm not poor. No, no. She's like, look at you. <laughs> I saw what Katrina has done to you. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks, Katrina. Oh, <laughs> I've been coming up off y'all, so I love y'all for that. <laughs> but over all things, I love this comedy. I do it. This is my dream. It's always been my dream. But on the other side, I always had another dream. And that dream was to be very sexy. 
the male exotic bag. <laughs> And my name is the Popsicle Man. <laughs> so tonight, my dream is going to come true. <laughs> in this barbershop for all the ladies, men, whatever. <laughs> Y'all clap, sing, make a song for you, whatever. Sing your favorite song, clap it up, or snap, do whatever. Because I'm going to get down. You know what I'm saying? Y'all better see the handy cat assassin. And the world tonight. So let's put a break down. I see you when you're looking at me. I'm waiting for you to tell me what it's gonna be. With this feeling that Woke up when Big Mama called and asked you what happened and cried four more hours. 
and everything ended in there. And I didn't do nothing. <laughs> and you never thought you did nothing. And stop crying. Oh, hey, no. You be, <laughs> she be like, yo, shut up. I'm going to come in there and whoop you some more. You be, Jesus, you're going to have to kill me because I can't stop. And then you be wasting hateful stuff on her. It be like, no, girl. You be like, oh, oh, she died after Christmas. <laughs> and you don't mess up Christmas for nobody. You getting that gift. If she choke on a chicken ball doing Thanksgiving, you're going to bring her back. You know, it's bad. You know, kids are just hard here. And when they used to quit putting all that weed in them little girls' house. Yeah. You know, that little girl can't even hold her head. I've got all the little room with noodles, 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 and noodles in their head. You know what I'm and we supposed to believe this. I had daps all on the back of her neck. And it's picture day. Yeah. And you other mothers, quit going to Walgreens buying them little barber kits. You know you don't know how to cut no hair. Little boy come to school, picture day. Looks like he got the mane about the head because you done cut holes because he was moving. You know what I'm saying? Kids don't even want to stand right here. Picture today looking like this. Other than the kids pointing out. Stop it. And last but not least, if I see one more belly blouse with a C section cut, I'm going to bust you in your face. <laughs> that is not sexy. I don't know where it's coming from, but I guess when you go to the rain, they come with the clothes. You know what I'm saying? Sitting around in the club and thinking you're jacking. Your stomach looks like shit. You know, that old ground beef or something. You know? <laughs> I know. I was going to eat when I came to the restaurant. I seen you. I ain't hungry no more. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to keep the show rolling. Hey, this brother I'm about to bring to the stage, I am so proud to have this brother here tonight. This brother has done BT Comic Beauty. You know, he just getting ready to start with Saturday Night Live. He's from Chicago. We are blessed. This brother one of the funniest comics and impressionists. And you don't hear a lot of, you know, brothers really throwing down as an impressionist. But this brother, tonight, Y'all gonna truly enjoy. I want y'all to give a big round of applause and give it up for my man, Mr. Reggie. Red! Give it up! Very happy to be here in the city of Chicago and happy to be alive. If you have to be alive, say what's up. What's, what's up? up? Yeah, no doubt, man, because there's a lot of stuff that's going on in the world, you know. And, you know, as a comedian, you know, we have to, you know, keep up on what's going on. So we have to read the newspapers, you know, we have to watch the news, you know. I'm give y'all an example of why you should watch the news. Because we've been seeing the calamities going all over the world, right, with Katrina, right, what happened in India. Right? It's just crazy, man, what's going on in the world, man. But we have to watch it. Lady just um, threw three of her kids off the bridge and killed three of her children. You know, the world is losing their mind. You know, I was in L.A. somewhere at a comedy club, and uh, I was watching uh, the news, and I fell asleep. And uh, it was kind of funny, because I fell asleep and had dreamed, you know, a whole different newscast, right? Right, you know, the news briefs that come on, you know, you watch your favorite program and you hear, we interrupt this regular program to bring you a special report. And now reporting from Washington, D.C., Ted Koppel. This is Ted Koppel live from Washington, D.C. Tonight we go live to the New Orleans, except several days after the devastation there. Uh, so much has happened. The nation is in mourning. The nation is trying to grip on what just happened in New Orleans. This is the fifth day of it. Let's go live to a uh, live sound bite from the Reverend Jesse Jackson out earlier. And let's hear what he has to say. Let's go to that sound bite right now. Out here today, what's in the face of America? Well, America's flag is red, white, and blue, but our country is rainbow. <laughs> Yellow, brown, black, and white. We're all! Presses and God said, I'm up! <laughs> Time has come. <laughs> we just got back uh, from the city of Bedrock, where we sit down with Wilma, Little <laughs> Fred, and Barney. <laughs> they told me, they said, Jesse, what do you want? What do we want? <laughs> we want relief for the citizens of New Orleans. What do we want? They told me, they said, Jesse, Wilma, Billy, Fred, and Barney. <laughs> Fred and Barney told me about the Stony Rock Construction Company. How they can be 
being beneficial and helping us today in the tragedy. Also, talk to the Walla Buffalo members. <laughs> Why don't you say women yabba yabba do? Yabba yabba do. There's the Reverend Jesse Jackson down uh, there in New Orleans giving his uh, speech there. Uh, uh, let's uh, just keep it going as we. Uh, Okay, we have one more person that's out there uh, that will be helping us uh, there on the east side. Can you tell us exactly uh, what's going on? I'm sorry, uh, Richard Pryor. Can you tell us exactly what's going on on the east side of the building? Can you give us a report? I don't give a fuck with nobody. <laughs> <laughs> they got me down in this motherfucker. I said, God damn, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> Right, I was minding my business, right? I was in my wheelchair, right? I was minding my own business, right? And I got a call, like, at 12 o'clock at night. I said, Rich, you got to watch out what is going on in the news. I said, motherfuckers are dying in New Orleans. He said, man, the cane got him. I said, the cane? He said, yeah, the cane. I said, oh, what are you talking about? He said, the cane. I said, are you talking about cocaine? Cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> slapped out a whole motherfucking city cocaine. That shit, I said, shit, that's some bad coke. Hey. <laughs> so I decided to wheelchair my ass down here to, and make sure that the cocaine supply is secure. Now, over here in the right, we have the cocaine supply right here. Now, nobody's going to be fucking around with this cocaine right here, all right? We got guards and shit right here. Now, I just want to say to the people that's watching the program, whatever the fuck you do, do not come down here if you ain't got no trust, because this shit will make you be on trust. <laughs> I seen a motherfucker run with three motherfucking TVs. I said, nigga, what the fuck are you going to do with the TV? <laughs> a PlayStation motherfucker ran. I said, shit, the shit you should have got, motherfucker, you didn't get. <laughs> Back to you in the newsroom. All right, that's Richard Pryor live there uh, helping us with the uh, events in New Orleans. Let's, uh, let's go live to the person that's dealing with the uh, children. He's been there all day working with the children. Let's go live to Bernie Mac. Bernie, has it been difficult working with the children since you've been? Has it been difficult working with these little motherfuckers? <laughs> These little son of a bitches done made me so motherfucking mad. <laughs> Running around like they lost their motherfucking mind. The auntie can't find her no motherfucking place. I'm madder than a motherfucker out here. Motherfucker, put that shit down, you little bastard. <laughs> another news brief. We interrupt this regular program to bring you a special report. And now, another news brief. This is Dan Gumpel, live back on the uh, situation in New Orleans. Let's go back now. Uh, on the field, we have a person that will be helping with the desserts. Uh, let's go live to uh, Bill Cosby. <coughs> Can you tell us exactly uh, what your spin on the whole situation there? You're responsible for the desserts. Bill Cosby, would you tell us? Let's see, do we have time for a start? See, because, see, people don't understand, see? Because when I got the call to come down to help in New Orleans, what happened was I left the Jello pudding pops in the Coca-Cola, and I left uh, the Jello pudding. See, and I had to go back to my home. See, so I got on the plane, went back to Los Angeles. That was my wife Camille. She told me I left the Jello pudding upstairs, locked up in the freezer. See, to keep away from the grandchildren because they eat too much, right? So I go there. There's my wife Camille. I said, Camille, where? <laughs> is the jello pudding pops. He said it's right upstairs. So I grab the jello pudding pops, I run downstairs, then I get on the plane heading back to New Orleans. Now I get a call on the cell phone and it's Fat Albert. And Fat Albert says, hey, 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 Mr. Cosby, I understand I'm on way to New Orleans. I just joined the National Guard, so I'm gonna be helping FEMA and all the witnesses and relief. And I said, fine, come on down there, I'll meet you down there in FEMA. So we get down there, and the children are running around, so we assembled the children, we got them together. Bernie Mac was having a hard time dealing with the children, but we had some Jell-O pudding pops and Coca-Cola and Jell-O pudding 
for the children, I'd like to take this moment to let everybody know that I have a new Jello pudding pop, and it's going to be called Katrina. When you put it in your mouth, it's guaranteed to be a disaster. <laughs> 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 Yes, Katrina. Yes, you put it in your mouth and, well, you'll be swimming around. <laughs> yes, Katrina Pudding Pops. You'll be able to put it in your mouth and um, um, the people will be doing strange things like taking TVs and stuff. Katrina. <laughs> well, that'll really make you go crazy. <laughs> Thank you, Bill Cosby, for that. And then you keep on flicking, right? So that's why you gotta watch the news. The news is important to watch. You gotta pay attention to the news, man. Pay attention to the news, man. You know, I, I love doing stand-up comedy, man. Some of my favorite comedians, man. You know, I don't know if y'all seen the HBO name of Chris Rock. Chris Rock is, I love Chris Rock. Chris Rock sounds like he a slave sometimes, don't he? <laughs> right? No, really, you see the old black exploitation movies, right? The step and fetch it movies, right? When you see that, you think about Chris Rock, right? Because of the way he delivers his message, right? It's all, or can you imagine him like in, you know, in an old black exploitation movie, you know, like a step and fetch it or an Amos and Andy, right? Now, ladies and gentlemen, Amos and Andy, starting Chris Rock. God damn! I can't believe the cab company is still not making any money. What in the hell are we going to do? What are we going to do to make sure we make some money? You got any goddamn, uh, uh, you got any, got, I don't even know what I'm saying. I just know we need to make money of the cab, right? Chris Rock always talks like that. Now, I ran to Chris, man, at, uh, at the airport in Los Angeles. I thought I would go to him and have a conversation with him. You know, it's my Chris Rock, man, Los Angeles, man. Perfect opportunity, man. Hey, Chris, what's going on, man? My name is Reggie Reg, man. I'm doing impressions, man. I'm doing an impression of you, man. He was mad as hell, man, because he didn't get his bags, man. Like, man, I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> I can't find my damn bag. I don't want to talk to you. I'm trying to catch a damn plane. I'm trying to go to LA. I'm already in LA. I don't even know where I'm going. <laughs> I mean, the cocaine that mess me up fucking around with Richard Pryor. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going. Only thing I know is my luggage is here. Can't go anywhere. Because my luggage is not here. I don't want to talk to you. I do not want to talk to you right now. I said, all right, Chris, all right, man, you gonna do me like that? That's cool, man. Then I ran into Denzel. Denzel was the coolest out of all of them, man. I saw Denzel in a restaurant, man. He was cool as hell, man. I said, man, Denzel, perfect opportunity in Los Angeles. Running into Denzel Washington, man. I said, man, Denzel, I'm a fan of yours. I seen all your movies, man. He gave me that Denzel look. He came at me raw, like he didn't want to be bothered, like for training day. He gave me that Denzel look. <laughs> so, uh, what's the problem? Man, ain't no problem, man. I'm just a fan of yours, man. How you doing, man? I mean, Rich Ray, a comedian, man. Y'all yeah, doing impressions, man. If I could do an impression of you, you do an impression of me. That's what you do. You, 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 you sit around all day and just watch, watch my movies, watch the way I talk. Is that what you do? You in show business, son. Oh, you're a comedian. Okay, all right. Made me laugh. Made me laugh. No, you can't make me laugh because there's nothing to laugh about, huh? No, it's nothing to laugh about. I tell you what. Let me see. Let me see what you got in your pocket. Ah, see. Uh-huh. Yeah, you got a lot of things in your pocket, don't you, huh? But I guess you don't have these, do you, huh? Huh? You don't have these. You're a smart guy, right? Right? What, you want to check me now? Huh? You want me to turn around? Huh? Is that what you want me to do? You want me to put my hands right here? Huh? Is that what you want me to do, huh? Huh? Is that what you want me to do? That's my time, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, everybody. I'll keep it going for Reggie Ray. I want to thank the lady. God have mercy. Are y'all married? Any of y'all married?
You married? <laughs> you married? Nope. Oh, yeah, you married? Oh, yeah, it's going on after the show. Uh, <laughs> I did get the money from Ticketmaster, so, you know, we going to do our thing. You know what I'm saying? It's on me tonight. But, um, yeah, um, I want to talk about barbers, too, you know. Uh, his brother's like Will is actually cutting hair now. And his brother's like y'all is going as they customers. Now, you know Will can't hold nothing steady, you know what I'm saying? But yet, y'all want to go get a line. And y'all sitting up here with a line all the way up here, <laughs> this, that, and the other, you know what I'm saying? And then I look at it like this. I look at women more so than men. Because you go to a beauty shop and a sister's hair tore down, and you going to let her do your hair? You know what I'm saying? Come on, you need to take a look at this, you know what I'm saying? And then some of y'all get them hairstyles to be in a book. You know what I'm saying? If you got like all that forehead, you know, whatever tie you get, you got to have some bangs. <laughs> Y'all, you, know, you know what I'm saying? It ain't for everybody. You know what I'm saying? For real. You know? That's like if you cock eyes, good sunglasses ain't going to help. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, for real. I went on a date like that. I was dating this sister, and we had been going out a couple of times. She had like that Aaliyah cut, you know what I'm saying, on her face. And I was like, girl. Yeah. So one night, you know, we started getting close and close. I'm like, girl, I thought we got this hand. Move the hair this month, no lie. She ain't had no eye. <laughs> you supposed to tell somebody something like this. You know what I'm saying? We had dinner eating, I can't enjoy my meal. Cause I'm like, okay, I ain't got an eyeball. You know what I'm saying? How I'm taking her to meet my mom. You know what I'm saying? You know my niece gonna say what's on her mind. Yeah, oh, oh, she ain't got no eye on her face. You know what I'm saying? Cause kids don't care. You know what I'm saying? That don't make no sense. Something wrong with you, lady. When we date, let a brother know before we spend a lot of money on. For real, just keep it real. Cause some of y'all wearing them Victoria push-up bra. I want to tell you, whoever Victoria, I'm gonna whoop his ass or her ass when I meet him. You know what I'm saying? I'm with this woman. I just spent child support money, income tax money on her. You know what I'm saying? Three months we dating. I done paid rent, car notes, everything. I paid other kids child support. You know what I'm saying? I get her. She's talking about you ready, daddy? I'm like, what do you call me, daddy? Yeah, I'm ready. You know what I'm saying? So she said, I'm gonna go in here and get ready. I'm gonna come on out. She came. You know, she had the little cherry tattoo on her breast. You know, looking good. You know, she come out, had the little bra pushed up, and I was like, yeah. Boy, she was like, you ready? I'm like, yeah. She's like, can you one snap? Yeah, I hit the first one, hit the second one, hit that third one, and bra shot up. <laughs> <laughs> this mother turn around. Titties hanging to the floor. <laughs> cherry that turned into a cherry tree. <laughs> she got those stretch marks so it looked like roots. I don't know whether it's kiss them or water. I don't know what the <laughs> Come on, handle your business. I'm down there trying to suck the nipple and licking the floor. I said, do you want your flow mop? Do you want it? We get this other one off my back. <laughs> Stop it. Let our brother know. We're going to keep this show rolling. This brother I'm about to bring to the stage, this is one of my guys. He's funny as hell. He ghetto and funny. I call him the mayor at Inglewood. You see him on this season, BET Comic View. He did the Death Jam. I want y'all to show him a whole lot of love because he might rob y'all's ass with the comic thing. I'm going to go back to what he used to do. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to go to jail because his brother's like this. I want y'all to give a big round of applause and give it up for my man. Ball head! Give him some love. for some Africans to uh, put micro braids in your motherfucking hair. You need to pay $350 for three African bras, cooking goat meat, burning insects, with no shoes on, <laughs> snatch the line and out the top of your motherfucking head. <laughs> that shit look good when you put it in. As soon as you take the shit out, it look like you got keep on therapy on the side. <laughs> Can't say huh, your head hurt like a motherfucker. <laughs> take all the ivory broken out of wall rings. Summertime is over with. I'm mad at the motherfucker because I ain't got to look around and see uh, women with them sandals with flowers on them, no motherfucker. No. <laughs> <laughs> and they ask about the beauty supply with that bullshit. 
and one dollar ninety nine cents for them saddles with the flowers on. He ain't gonna get a Gucci purse out of some nigga named Pookie Trump to the cross street from the currency shop. They ain't want me to buy them a long island like ice cream so crazy than a motherfucker. I think that your outfit should uh, overrate your motherfucking drink. If your outfit costs uh, $12, you shouldn't be asked for no long island ice cream. You shouldn't really be asked for a motherfucker that just make it like you seen me in a movie. <laughs> Nothing. Relationships is crazy. I'm uh, single right now because I'm a comic and uh, a lot of women can't stand a nigga that's more famous than them or more popular than them. And then, you know, I just like a lot of women, you know what I'm saying? I like to fuck around a lot, you know. I get confused sometimes when women be trying to hold me hostage, you know. I feel like a relationship is like an uh, airplane ride full of hot uh, a -ray. <laughs> you don't know what the fuck gonna happen. Right? <laughs> you wanna stay in your motherfucking seat. <laughs> Life is crazy. I love, I love women though. I love women, but I hate women that don't know how to stay in any place. <laughs> Meaning, because I don't know what women Okay. Yeah, okay, don't be a part of the show. <laughs> <laughs> this, ain't, this ain't no Jerry Spring. <laughs> Y'all decide that y'all gonna fool around not being in a relationship. Cool, if he got a woman, let him have his woman. You're gonna be his side woman. Stay in your motherfucking lane. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Don't be trying to make no. Because see, women is dirty. You could be with your boy one day, walking in the mall, chilling. You see a female you wanna talk to. Hey, how you doing? She's going, hi. Soon as that woman, same woman, see you with your woman, the conversation is a little different. You might not even speak to her because you be so motherfucking scared the woman you with gonna know you trying to fuck with her. But first thing that woman gonna say, hey, <laughs> that's that, I've been fucking you, hello. <laughs> <laughs> so that's when you got to get that woman in the blood like this, oh, let me speaking to me like that. I got to be looking at this motherfucker all the way home. Why are you talking to me like that? And she's gonna be asking who the fuck you is and why are you speaking? Get the fuck away from me. You trying to style some shit. <laughs> fuck that. I ain't with that shit. I had a woman hit me up. Was uh, standing together, and I come home from the crib. We come to the crib one night and did my comedy show. I'm out all night doing my damn thing. She gonna wake up talking to me. Where the fuck you been? It's four o'clock in the morning. Been out all night with your bitch. I looked at her. By the end, I knew in my mind she already had a scenario. If I told her the truth, she wasn't gonna believe it. So I told her what she wanted to hear. I said, Look, she ain't never said nothing about you ever wrong. <laughs> <laughs> she never talked about it like this. She always asked me about the kids. <laughs> Shit in my back, could you please 
Please pick up your stuff and start to read. Too cold to be um, shopping in strawberry, rainbow, and dots. You got all them damn bullshit shirts with your backs out. Especially if you got a big ass back look like you've been picking up expedition grip. <laughs> get back transplanted for any motherfucker. You know? And I ain't got no problem with talking about big people. You know what I'm saying? I ain't no little motherfucker. But I wasn't always this big. But women are seriously insensitive about a man. Oh, wait. Y'all don't care what y'all say about a nigga being big. As soon as we say something about y'all being big, y'all want to get all stressed out, lose your hair, get depressed. Me and y'all think we ain't got no feelings. We got feelings too. You know what I'm saying? We just hide our feelings better than y'all. I'm in the mall one day, walking around, mad my bitch, looking at stuff. I see a female. I ain't seen some news. I ain't seen it. You know what I'm saying? I'm glad to see her. See her come across me with this crowd in there. I'm like, oh man, that was my girl. She was real nice when we was cool. First thing she said, she opened her mouth. Damn, you fat as hell. <laughs> what the fuck you been eating now? <laughs> <laughs> the life is a beautiful thing. And if you're married, you know what I'm saying? That's cool to be married if you love that person. But women, please understand. The wedding ceremony, that's the pressure that you put on a motherfucker, man. <laughs> they don't give a fuck about that. We don't give a fuck about the cake, <laughs> the invitations. We don't want to be paying for all this shit. Tuxedo. We only got two friends. You don't like them? The best <laughs> man. <laughs> the best man is my boy. He ain't got no woman. He got a lot of women. You always ask why you got all these different women and am I cheating with? Look, let's just get there. If a man loves you, he'll marry you anyway. He'll marry you in the gas station. He don't give a fuck. I'm going to get you uh, fill up one pump, Jim, stickers, and a marriage license, please. Thank you. <laughs> oh, Y'all don't have a big old ceremony. If the man, man, for everything, I don't see why it's not, it, it's, it's unfair. Why he don't get no intro music? You know what I'm saying? Why he don't get a, a walk? He should get that funeral music. Dun, 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 dun. You stand your ass at the aisle with your damn daddy shit. Then you come, your father come bring you down the aisle. Knowing damn well that motherfucker don't like me. I got to wait for him to bring you out shit. Crazy, man. Love is a beautiful thing, but it's too stressed out. Too stressed out. Kids uh, need their ass whooped on the regular now. You know? That's what's wrong with the motherfucking household now. Ain't nobody fucking up no kids no more. <laughs> when I told my there used to be public ass whoopings everywhere. <laughs> so you know, the only last thing you went in the grocery store and seen a motherfucker getting slapped from the meat, from the can, from the goods to the produce. You didn't know say that. <laughs> I mean, ass and toys or something in the stomach. <laughs> 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 We had breakfast one time. I'm nine years old. Nine motherfucking years old. I asked her, they asked me, sir, she just going out, said, bus, I said, you know, you uh, was a mistake. I'm going to school, like, what the fuck is this a mistake? What the fuck? I'm going to school all day, thinking I ain't even supposed to be here. Again, instead of my mom telling me, instead of my mom telling me she don't know how to help me with my homework, I come in and House on his mind, he's going to help us over. She was bust out times. You know you're supposed to be seen and not heard. I said, well, I just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just going to go in my motherfucking room. I'm gonna go to <laughs> so all my life, I'm walking around the crib, knowing that I'm mistaken, knowing I'm supposed to be seen and not heard. I'm 25 years old. In the mall one day, I see a motherfucker standing next door to me. He said, hey, what's up, man? You been with me? I'm looking at him and saying, you been with me? I said, yeah, I been with you, motherfucker. He said, damn, I didn't know you could talk. <laughs> Motherfucker, you should stay in that motherfucking house with me, shit. <laughs> Don't talk to me, like a library in my motherfucking house, shit. <laughs> Ass whoopers was a motherfucker. If you were old school motherfucker, you know, get what with sticks court. The next goddamn day was uh, gym day. Yeah, <laughs> 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 motherfucker looking at you like, damn, you been on the same shit, motherfucker. A whip on your forehead, you ain't done right. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy, man. Now, DCFS. 
when they hurt child abuse, got a household all fucked up. Can't do shit. You see, I've been in the penitentiary before. So I don't like doing shit going to no motherfucking jail. My little old son scared me real quick one day. I told him, I said, do that bullshit again in school. I'm gonna beat your ass. He said, he put his hand on me. Going back to jail. I said, all right. One <laughs> <laughs> thing, do what you feel. <laughs> And I see a lot of men in there uh, get uh, love made to it. I <laughs> feel like I don't need to be going back in there to no little ass kid and trying to make love to me. So I was like, that, that shit alone. But I had to get him mentally, though. You know what I'm saying? I had to mentally get his ass. So I knew I was going to do something to him that was going to fuck him up. But if he called DCFS or went in a child abuse, it was going to look at him like he was crazy. So I did 4 o'clock in the morning, when he go to sleep, knocked out. I get that baseball bat with some motherfucking nails in it. <laughs> Stitch cord with some of the leather misses off of us so we make that <laughs> <laughs> big ass motherfucking my butt. Fly you are. Walk dead up in the room, throw that shit on his ass. What? What? What's wrong? What's wrong? And I looked at him, I said, you're not kidding your motherfucking son. And he finds your body. <laughs> Walk out of this goddamn room before I flip the light on said, Sleep well. Click. <laughs> Three times a week I did that. He didn't know when I was coming in the room. That motherfucker one night he was, he was waiting for me. I clicked the light on that motherfucker in there with a raincoat on, some moon boots. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out. Shout out. I looked at him. What are you going to say to DCF? My, my dad keep throwing water on me. <laughs> like, Get your ass out of here. <laughs> my daughter, she's 13 years old. Fast little motherfucker. Then she can say what she wants to say. Last Christmas, she gonna try to put me in a situation. You know what I'm saying? Cause she older now. She wanna ask me for shit for uh, Christmas. And it's cool because I love my daughter. She was coming to be a lady. But she wants some hot shit that dad can't get. <laughs> she gonna call me some dead. I want a, a platinum chain with my name in it with diamonds, real diamonds and boo. And I also want some no no boo. I said, what the hell is them? She said, they cost like $1,700. <clears throat> I want a moped so I can ride around the neighborhood with my friends. And me and my kid, you know, I was glad because my daughter, she knows what she wants in life. And I had to really express to her the meaning of Christmas. I let her know, uh, bitch, this is Jesus' birthday. This is what you call me for. That's my birthday. 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 man. That's my birthday. That's my birthday. That's my I want that blood test. <laughs> <laughs> I got all that bullshit. Gotta let them know where it is. You don't, you don't put them in their place, they're gonna run right over your ass. Mm -hmm. Shit. One Christmas, I was broke in a month, because I got five kids. And five baby mom. Mm. Uh, you went there to stop me, so shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> I got sick one month for Christmas, though. I called all five of my baby mamas at the same time and told them, look, uh, I want to get a blood test. Them bitches got the corn all the time. Motherfucker, you, you ain't seen it out. Whatever. I want a blood test. I made sure it was on the 18th of December. They didn't know what the fuck I was doing. Then when Christmas time come, they were talking about the kids want uh, they gifts. Oh, <laughs> 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 did you get the test results back? <laughs> <laughs> you got those test results back, we boogie it. When you don't got it back, I'm sorry for you. <laughs> Man, I hate, I hate, I hate fake motherfuckers. Fake motherfuckers. There's a lot of black women that are fake in what they say. They judge me on other women. They shouldn't be like that. You could be anywhere in the club in America, sitting around chilling, hanging out. Three women come together, see another woman they don't know. They look and say, "Did you see what this motherfucker got on? <laughs> she got on the wrong shit. They want to judge. But her friends that they came with her, they gonna look at another different way. Cause really, the one that's always dressed fucked up." She be the one that's driving. Mm -hmm. As soon as the other ones come, girl, you like this one I got on? Oh, yeah, girl, sure, it's cool. So they get the car, they be like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you get no accident, girl. <laughs> <laughs> she wonder why she's sitting at the table holding all the purses all the <laughs> But men, we don't care. I'll let y'all women know, okay? We don't give a fuck about how y'all look. We don't really care. Because ugly women are the first choice in life anyway. 
<laughs> Y'all the first one. When I walk in the club, Jenny, I walk get up to the first. Other than the woman I know, the other than I know, hey, look, y'all. Uh, I don't know if everything else is going to be working, but uh, I know I'm going to be hollering at you after this. <laughs> so tell your girl you ain't holding the purses all night. And we're going to go uh, on Stony Island to the Zanzibar Hotel. <laughs> it costs $25 for four hours to keep your socks on. Everything will be good. <laughs> Stressing myself out, <laughs> trying to go back together. I don't know how to back. I don't know what to do. I like to tell a woman the truth. That's why I feel all men right now. Start telling women the truth. You know what I'm saying? It, it'll be better. You 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 gonna either get it right then, and now you ain't gonna get it. Just walk up on her. You ask her the little general bullshit you want to ask her, but keep it real with her. What's your name? What's your sign? Do you swallow? I mean, kids. You. <laughs> <laughs> you might say yes, yes. What? <laughs> <laughs> hey fellas, let me let y'all know there ain't nothing wrong with going down on a woman. Ain't nothing wrong with going down on a woman. You just can't go down on every motherfucker. That's right. Yeah, they got tricked, they tricked and fucked up and almost died one night. <laughs> At the club, I see this woman, she tight, beautiful, fine, everything about her. I'm talking about, I see her, see when she walked in the music stop. <laughs> Take her home, I'm lucky enough to get her. She don't want to get down with me. I'm like, hey, okay, yeah. I'm throwing throw on my eyes and brothers. Do some little candlelight incense in the room. You know what I'm saying? Got the little TV down low. Because I like the lights off. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. <laughs> Man, you know, I didn't know that they made no underwear to uh, camouflage the smell of a coochie. <laughs> <laughs> so I got this picture on my wall. I got two pictures on my wall of Tupac and uh, Scott Page. And um, everybody, when she took her panties off, the pictures get like this. <laughs> <laughs>
come to the room. Make sure you shave the bag. Slow down, babe. I'ma enter you soon. Before I do, let me show you this move. Take you round the shot. Get your head done by your dude. While I get high, I got a couple of runs to make. Grab another dub. Smoke hard and get to know my state. East side, the west side. Let's ride to the barber shop. Get paid and tell a couple of jokes. And when we leave, we get the Side to side, 